Willie D Live. What's up, family? I look like I got a little bug going on here. I'm trying to see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, the internet is slow. In any event, fam, let's, uh, let's see if we can get through this. We, uh, all right, here we go. If it's your first time checking out the show, let me know what city, what state you're coming in from. If you're outside of the U.S., let me know what country you're representing. Throw up your flag. Family, I need you to smash up the likes, smash up the likes, smash up the likes. Also, if you have not done so already on YouTube after you subscribe, there's a little bell next to your subscribe button. Go ahead and click that thing right now so you can get your notifications each time I drop a new video like this. That way you'll be in the loop. I'm going to let a few hundred of y'all come in and then I'm going in. But in the meantime and in between time, I'm going to get some shout outs to the early birds. What's up, Laurie Parks? What it do? Mm. Naptown 317 is in the house. Yeah, that's crazy. You would think that after Kobe had made what? To, let's see what kind of bread Kobe was working with. Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant's worth. Let's see. Six. God, good God. Kobe Bryant's net worth at the time of his death on January 26, 2020, was about $600 million dollars according to Forbes. Kobe Bryant was survived by his wife, Vanessa, who is the executor of the Bryant estate. Woo! Man, man, man. That is a lot of cake. Bridget Hardison, what's up? What's up, Fred Cole? Tony Dale. What's up, Tony Dale? Family, make sure you uh, click that notification button and select all notifications. When you select an all notification, that means all notifications from me. Click that notification button to make sure you get your, uh, get notified when I drop a new video. Uh, YouTube is saying a lot of y'all don't have your notifications on and you're not selecting all notifications. So click that notification bell and then select all notifications in the drop. J. Mitch Vision, what's up? I'm going in, fam. Going in. Let me put a pickup of Kobe and his family. That's Kobe Bryant, his mother and his father, celebrating one of his many championships. To the right there is Vanessa, his widow. Let me get a picture of the family first. That's Kobe, his mother, and his daddy. Look like a very happy family. This is where it started, fam. This is where the legend of Mamba started. With Kobe Bryant being conceived via that man and that woman that you see in the picture. They met up. They fell in love and they decided that, yo, you know, we, we're going to have some babies together. Here come Kobe. All through high, all through uh, Pampers, Similac, elementary, middle school, high school, mama and daddy right there. Coaching, teaching, loving, nurturing, sponsoring, sheltering, clothing, feeding, you know, just doing all those things that, you know, parents do. Encouraging. His daddy put the basketball in his hand. But they're struggling for money when he's worth $600 million? At the time of his death, 
that don't sit well with me, family. And I know it's, 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 it's her money, but that just don't sit well with me. It don't sit well with me. In any event, fam, here we go. That's the championship ring that's in question. That is the ring that has Kobe's parents facing backlash and Vanessa Bryant, his widow, being criticized for not helping the parents out financially. Kobe Bryant gave his father, Joe, his very first championship ring as a gift in 2000. He won it when the Los Angeles Lakers defeated the Indiana Pacers, making it his first of five NBA championships throughout his storied career. He gave his mother, Pamela, a replica, a replica, but not the original ring that is made of 14 karat gold and has a total of 40 diamonds. That's the one that's being auctioned off. So he gave his mother, Pamela, a replica, but not the original one. That's the one being auctioned off, not the original that has the 40 diamonds. The replica is being auctioned off. This is the second time that Kobe's parents have attempted to sell some of his prized possessions and fans are P-I-S-S-E-D. One called them disgraceful, while another noted, Kobe would have never sold it. Wow, sad. Others felt the ring should stay in the family or that the late athlete's wife, Vanessa Bryant, should buy it and keep it safe. Hmm, that's a thought. <clears throat> Prior to his death, Kobe and his parents reportedly attempted to make amends after several fallouts that began when he started dating Vanessa. Joe and Pamela didn't attend the couple's wedding in April 2001. Over the years, their brief reconciliations were documented, but that came to a halt in 2013. When you give, you give, and they take, they take, take. At what point do you draw a line in the sand, Kobe tweeted, according to the Los Angeles Times, with the hashtag, hurt beyond measure, gave me no warning. And finally, love? The tweet was in response to his parents attempting to sell several beloved pieces of memorabilia from Kobe's career, including the aforementioned, the aforementioned uh, championship ring and his high school jerseys. This prompted a lawsuit the New York Post reported because Kobe reportedly wasn't notified about the auction and didn't give his parents permission to sell any of the items in question. We regret our actions and statements related to the Kobe Bryant auction memorabilia, said Joe and Pamela in a statement at the time, per ESPN. We apologize for any misunderstanding and unintended pain we have caused our son and appreciate the financial support he has provided over the years. This did put a further strain on Kobe's relationship with his parents as they did not attend his final NBA game back in April 2016. Our relationship is SHIT, he explained in ESPN. I say, I'm going to buy you a very nice house. And the response is, that's not good enough. Then you're selling my SHIT. Neither Vanessa nor Joe or Pamela has publicly spoken out about the current auction, which would be live until March 30th. Uh, wow. Just wow. Now, let me, uh, again, picture of the family and Vanessa. Let me give some context to these type of things, right? Being that I've enjoyed a, 
a fair amount of financial success, right? Um, you can't help everybody. You can't help everybody. But let's start with family. Let's start with mom and daddy who brought you into the world. It's apparent that Kobe wanted to see his parents live well. You know, he said, I'm gonna buy you a house. You know, I'm gonna buy you this, I'm gonna do this. It looks like to me, and this is a sad situation, even when I look at the funeral, when I watch the funeral, watching how the family was basically not even acknowledged by Vanessa. There wasn't, I don't even think there was acknowledged at all at, the, at the, well, you know what? Shaq acknowledged him. Shaq acknowledged him. I ain't got no problem with that. That's right. Shaq acknowledged him. So I had a rocky relationship with my mother. Me and my daddy, we was cool when we was, when we was in contact with each other. <clears throat> Never had a personal falling out with my daddy ever, not once. When I got my first big check, uh, I was living in an apartment. And I bought my mom a house with that check before I bought myself a house. When my daddy uh, took ill, he was gravely ill, I brought him in to live with me. He lived out his final days at my house. See, I was raised in an era where it don't matter what mama do or even daddy do. Man, these are the people that brought me into the world, so I just felt an obligation. Now, I know everybody don't feel that way. I'm just telling you how I felt. I came up in that type of era. Mama's mama, daddy's daddy, no matter what. So even though we had a strained relationship, I still, I still felt obligated in my heart to make sure that my mom and daddy had a good life. And they didn't, you know, they didn't have to go asking or begging or selling things to meet their, and to make ends meet. Everybody don't feel that way. But there's also have been situations where I have family members who had their hands out so long it started looking like a cup. Just always got their hands out. And never do the right thing with the money that you give them. You give them some help, they take that and they take off and you don't see them again until they need help again. You got those who you can give some advice to. You give them the money, you give them the advice, and they'll go do the total opposite. So, so you have to kind of like, what I learned to do is help others as long as it don't hurt me. And it looks like Kobe had helped his parents to the point where it started hurting him. When you work for your money, you tend to be a little bit more cautious with how you throw your money around, how you spend your money. And if you don't blow your own money, you don't appreciate others blowing your money. And as much as I appreciate Kobe's parents for bringing him into the world, and I'm sure he appreciated them even more. It just seemed like to me that the parents 
which is really, really bad with money. And because there's no excuse to be selling Kobe Bryant memorabilia and you his parents. Like, <laughs> that's wild. That's wild. Can you imagine the disrespect? You putting this stuff out on the auction. It ain't, it's not just that it's disrespectful to take these gifts. And some of these things wasn't even gifts. It was just stuff that was left in their possession for what I understand. You know, he grew up in the house. He got a lot of accolades. They had my mama house. They had my daddy house. They had my parents' house. So a lot of this stuff was just memorabilia that was stored at his parents' house. And they took it and sold it without his permission. He didn't even find out it was for sale until everybody else found out it was for sale. So on one, you selling my stuff. My, my stuff that I take a lot of pride in, stuff that I worked hard for. And two, I'm over here sitting, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on millionaire status and my parents over here looking like some crackheads selling my stuff. Now that ain't no disrespect to the parents. It's just a metaphor. I mean, it's, I'm just make, I'm make, making an analogy here because that's the type of stuff crackheads would do. Selling, uh, selling their son, their, their millionaire son's memorabilia. memorabilia. So again, fam, I, 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 I appreciate the fam. I appreciate the parents, but I can get where Kobe drew the line and said, nah, I'm not going to let you blow through my money. I work for this money and I'm not going to let y'all just blow through my money. Everybody got a cut off, man. He probably put them, you know, he probably at some point had them on some type of allowance. Look, I'm going to give y'all this, how much money I'm going to give you. And they decided, you know what? We're going to live beyond our means. Even though we're being funded by our son, we're going to live beyond our means. How many times have y'all seen athletes go broke? Now, this is for all of y'all who want to try to shame Kobe for drawing the line. How many times have we seen athletes actually go broke trying to make sure everybody is financially secured, making sure everybody got it? How many times have we seen family members take advantage of celebrities, people with exorbitant amounts of money, people with exorbitant, exorbitant amount, amounts of money, and they just blow through their money, constantly giving, 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 giving. And next thing you know, that person is that celebrity is broke and back living at their parents' house and everybody's struggling all over again. Didn't even take one generation to get end up back in the hood. Come on, family. Come on. This is a tough pill to swallow. So drink plenty of water. I get where he's coming from. I get where he's coming from. And know that the parents did not approve of Vanessa. They wanted Kobe to marry a black woman. Kobe decided that he wasn't going to marry a black woman. This is the woman I'm going to marry. And this is the woman going to have my kids. And this is the woman that I trust. For whatever reason. Now, personally, I wouldn't marry a woman that my parents didn't approve of. And me and my parents didn't even get along. But I just know that people, when people uh, don't, when, when, when spouses don't have a good relationship with their in-laws, typically you're setting yourself up for a tumultuous relationship, extended tumultuous relationship with your in-laws and 
your children, it's going to be a constant struggle. You, when you have kids, you know, you ain't going to want the kids to be over at the in-laws house. They're going to be mad because they don't get the chance to spend time with them. Then when they go over to the in-laws house, they may hear certain things uh, that's negative about the parents. It's just a bad, bad situation. So uh, I wouldn't marry a woman that my, inter my inner circle wouldn't approve of. But maybe he has some holes in his inner circle. I'm just saying me. And I pick my inner circle very carefully. But because here's the thing, the inner circle, I'm talking about the type, the real, the, the solid inner circle. They want what's best for each other. And they know how hard it is to find a good person, to find a good, uh, a good mate. They know how hard that is. So your inner circle is rooting for you. So all they want to know is, most importantly, do she treat you right? Does he treat you right? Maybe he ain't what we expected. Maybe he not what we expected. But does he treat you right? Because we can live with that. If he treats you right, we can live with that. You know, some of them other things that, that we perceive as flaws, eh. but if he treats you right, we can live with that. If she treats you right, we can live with that. So when I look at the situation overall, Kobe was a sharp dude. Kobe was no dummy. In fact, I go as far as saying Kobe was one of the sharpest dudes in the NBA. So if Kobe decide this is what I want to do, this is who I want to be with. At that point, the parents should have just said, you know what? We don't really like it. She ain't our first choice. But as long as she treating our son right, we'll treat her right. Long as she love our son, we'll love on her. See, that's how it go. Because at the end of the day, most parents, especially good parents, just want their child to be happy. They may want them to be a great basketball star, a football star, a doctor, you know, a, a, an accountant, an engineer, whatever. But that child could be that child could be a janitor. At the end of the day, if that child is happy and ain't giving the parents no problems, they ain't having these issues, they're not an alcoholic, they ain't a drug dealer. Man, at the end of the day, the most important thing that those parents want is for their child to be happy. Every single parent that's listening to me right now would agree in unison. Every single one. The most important thing is for them to be happy because what good does it profit a man to gain the world but lose his soul? You got all this money. You got all of this attention, all this fame, but you dead inside. I think Kobe did what he thought was right. He married the woman that he wanted to marry for whatever reason. He saw whatever qualities he saw in her, he saw, and that's what he went with. Now, here's the thing. No matter what we might feel personally about Vanessa, we ain't never heard of Vanessa out there in the streets doing nothing foul, like nothing remotely like a lot of these women out here who, are, who got these names. We ain't heard about nothing like that from Vanessa. We ain't heard Vanessa out there in the streets getting tossed around. You know, she got the money now. She got all the money by herself. She got the time on her hands. We ain't heard about no salacious stuff, no salacious affairs and all that. Eventually the woman gonna move on and she should. But we ain't heard about none of that. Whatever she doing, I'm sure she probably got her dude or whatever, whatever. But she keeping that between her and him. Very secretive, very private. That's commendable to me. 
That's how you do it. That's respectful. She ain't did nothing to tarnish his legacy. In fact, she been fighting for his legacy. She been suing people left and right that try to try to uh, uh, take a dump on his legacy. She ain't let nobody take advantage of, uh, 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 of the estate. Nobody take advantage of his legacy. And she ain't loud about it. She ain't jumping on social media, jumping off, just popping off at the mouth. She ain't doing none of that. She didn't do it when he was alive. She ain't doing it now. Those girls, very respectful, picking their friends very, very carefully. None of that fly stuff, none of that on the internet twerking and bending over and acting damn fool, none of that. They ain't doing none of that. Kobe knew something that we didn't know. I hope that someday the parents can reconcile with Vanessa. I hope they can get it right. I hope that uh, it would be a good idea, a good thing if, the, if, if, if Vanessa could get her hands on that memorabilia. I don't know, because that could be a setup too, though. Because what if every time she put the stuff out, they put the stuff out there, Vanessa got a bid on it and she got to pay the highest price. It could be, it could be grossly overvalued. And she have to pay for it or feel compelled to buy it so that nobody, it doesn't fall in the hands of somebody else. You know, that's a sticky situation. Well, whose side are you on, fam? Who do you believe in? What do you think about this? Do you believe that the, the parents are doing the right thing by selling Kobe's memorabilia? Or do you believe that they're dead wrong. Figure it out. Find something else. Find another way. Drop a comment, family. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Appreciate you joining the live. Until next time, no more talk.